With the Republican National Convention just about a month away, debate rages about Jacksonville's safety. Sheriff Williams says he does not have the money, the manpower, or resources to ensure the city's safety. In fact, he bluntly said he is not comfortable with the security plan. Tim Murtaugh, the communications director for the Trump campaign, says Jacksonville is where we are going to be, and the city has a lot of experience providing security for large-scale events. He was talking about, well, basically Jaguar games. Mayor Curry says the city is working to get what it needs. Well, City Council President Tommy Hazori joins me now here on The Morning Show. And, Mr. President, I know you commended the sheriff for being forthright. Are you a little worried about the challenges here and meeting those challenges? I've always been worried, Bruce. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I've always been worried. I, uh, that's my nature. You know, you look for the hope for the best and uh, prepare for the worst. But I think the sheriff kind of put an exclamation point on the safety side. Uh, it seems like no one has really uh, put any effort in on the other half of that uh, equation, and that's our uh, coronavirus that uh, just seems like it's just existing and we're just dealing with it. Uh, just like we do everything else, and and uh, it's the difference. And this is a big, it's a big deal. And the public uh, health, safety, and welfare is very much at risk. And and so you know we've got a lot of questions. We've got a workshop on Friday at 10 o'clock, and we've got a lot of the uh, the participants uh, from the RNC mayor's office, uh, our own council auditor, as well as uh, uh, others, the sheriff, hopefully the mayor. Uh, I've invited him and he wants to look at his calendar and uh, I respect that. I know how busy the mayor is, but I think it's it's important to have the two top elected officials um, there to talk about uh, Jacksonville and and uh, how we're going to be protected uh, should the convention uh, still come here. I know you hope to get some answers, uh, assuming the mayor may show up. If you could directly question him, what would those questions be? It'd be basically the same I um, that I've been asking. I sent a, a series of questions between myself, Carla Miller, our ethics and uh, finance, uh, our uh, contract uh, uh, overseer, as well as our council auditor. Uh, and uh, I got a few answers back uh, with some blanks in there. And uh, we forwarded them to um, the finance director as well as our general counsel. But keep in mind, there are more questions to follow. Uh, the, um, the 18 other council members are going to ask whether the Republican or Democrat, I know, will ask the hard and tough questions. Uh, we cannot move forward unless we get answers, and we can't get answers unless we ask the right questions and they respond and not uh, uh, delay. Time is not on our side, uh, and as the sheriff said, uh, we're about at the point of no return. I know we are. Uh, this has consumed our council. Uh, I know we get issues like that from time to time, but we have a lot on our plate, and uh, and at least this thing has a timeline, but they can only go so far, and uh, and then you have to uh, fish or cut bait on this. You know, I, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You're, you're kind of talking in generalities, and I, I've known you for a long time. There are specific questions that have to be asked here. I mean, and Sheriff Williams basically was blunt. Don't you have to get blunt with the mayor? I think I have been. I'm not. I'm speaking as a council president. I can't speak for 18 other votes. I think I've been pretty blunt. The two major issues is finance, how that $33 million is going to be spent. It's got to go through the council for approval. It takes two thirds votes for that. I've said this over and over. It's not something that uh, I think I probably continue to be blunt without uh, being discourteous. But uh, in respect to the mayor and to the city of Jacksonville, I, uh, the other issue, of course, is the coronavirus. Nothing in this proposed 37-odd uh, page bill uh, that's been uh, filed yesterday that, uh, that tells me uh, what they're going to do about the virus, how they're going to address the people who are coming into town on airplanes and, and cars and trains or however they get here. And many will probably be infected. The percentages show that they would be. And uh, where are we going to put them if they are? What, the hospitals are going to be overloaded. The hotels are already at the peak. And uh, we need to make sure that not just the visitors and the conventioneers are protected, but we cannot have and ill afford to have this virus spread more than it is. We're at a peak right now. And uh, third largest hotspot in the country as a city and certainly number one as a state. Uh, this should never have happened. Uh, they should have seen this at the beginning. I don't know how more, much more uh, blunt I can be. Uh, the sheriff uh, handles the uh, uh, the 
the uh, public safety aspect of it. And when he said that um, he didn't have the resources, the manpower and woman power, uh, you got to keep in mind, he's talking about downtown. Right now, the Secret Service is taking care of what they call uh, the convention uh, zone, which is basically the fencing in all around East Jacksonville and up to the arena. Beyond that, it's the sheriff's call. And, uh, you know, he doesn't have enough men and women right now and to, and to put them downtown and not have the resources except for maybe the feds paying for the overtime. Uh, you can't cover enough blocks. And keep in mind, the neighborhoods are going to be impacted as well. Some of the parade routes, some of the uh, uh, demonstrations will take place there. And, and they look as if not the sheriff, but as if it's just going to be a peaceful uh, protest. Well, I've seen other cities. We've seen other cities. We know better than that. Uh, other out-of-towners will be coming here. Uh, I don't want to see any violence here. I don't think the sheriff is uh, is uh, wanting to see the same thing, and he's afraid of that, I believe. I can't speak for him, but I understand, you know, where he's coming from. So that's a big piece of the equation. So how much more blunt? I don't support it. Uh, that's pretty blunt. Um, and, and they'll really have to do a hurry-up offense to convince our council, two-thirds of our council, uh, to support uh, this legislation. Because if it doesn't pass, it tells you in the bill, if it doesn't pass, it essentially negates uh, a convention from the standpoint of the, of, uh, the pass-through for the $33 million that the federal government's given us. And uh, there are a lot of open-ended questions in there. There are no details in the policy, in, in the, um, excuse me, in the bill. And, of course, the... Uh, General Counsel Office and the RNC uh, General Counsel for this convention, Ms. Tori Lee, who's been negotiating with Jason Gabriel, uh, our OGC, uh, can't get into policy and legislation. We have to make that call. We're the oversight committee. We're the, the money uh, ball here in this uh, in, with this convention and with everything else. And that's uh, it wouldn't be prudent for this council to support something uh, that puts the fear of God uh, in, in our city and those who would be coming here. And so uh, there are a lot of hard questions. I don't know how much more blunt I can't say don't come because I think you've got 18 other councilmen that have to vote on this and, uh, and get their tough questions answered. And so far, there's a big black hole in this and uh, they're going to have to do some really uh, fast talking, but with real answers, honest answers, prudent answers. And that's what I'm expecting. If we don't get it, uh, then they don't get it. Do you think Jacksonville has been put in an untenuous situation? And do you worry that Jacksonville may be left holding the proverbial bag? Well, that's the other piece of the finances. And, and that's the other thing. We don't know. They, they, the uh, administration, our administration says that uh, it's not going to cost us anything. Well, you know, the devil's in the details. And it doesn't speak to what uh, we have to put up out front. And a big example is if we get this $33 million and it comes to us, it's not going to probably come in a lump sum. Uh, they'll probably do it piecemeal and, and uh, ask us to submit bills for we, monies that we put up front for the issues that they want covered. And no, there's no guarantee that if we don't dot our I's and cross our T's and forget to say may I, that we're going to get uh, our money back. I know a number of cities have had that problem. And uh, unlike FEMA, FEMA takes a long time. This won't take that long. But the question of, of um, how long before we get our money and do we qualify uh, under their guys, did we dot the I's and cross the T's? You know, there's too much at risk, too much at stake. Our budget can't afford it. And I, I can assure you that if I had to guess, most of our council members, well, probably all of them, will not vote for one dime to come out of our budget. City Council President Tommy Hazori. I appreciate your candor. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Thank you, Bruce. I hope I was candid enough. You were. Thank you. Thank